for those few chapters that of proprietary technologies that we don't want we don't care much about but finally chapter 23 will be PHP and this is what we're going to be doing the next four weeks so for next week I need you guys to read the PHP um, chapter okay I'm going to be next week I'm going to be telling you how to download and install the PHP interpreter in Apache and then I'm going to go through very quick samples on how to do PHP pages that dynamically gives you content but you guys have to read the entire chapter because I'm not going to go through every single example okay so starting next week we're going to start doing server size scripting can anybody tell me what server size scripting is anybody <coughs> it runs on the server so all this up to now we've been covering client side scripting specifically JavaScript that's the only technology the only specific technology we're covering here we're not covering flash or flex or JavaFX or or any of those other client side technologies JavaScript but there's also a server side technology and that scripting it's called server-side scripting can be done in many languages can you give me an example of a server-side scripting that's the language but what's the technology ASPs active server pages active server pages is the Microsoft version of a server-side scripting language I mean, I'm a server-side server scripting technology. And you can do active server pages in C Sharp, VB, J Sharp, all these different languages. Okay? Can anybody tell me another client-side, I mean, sorry, another server-side technology? How about PHP? <laughs> That's what you guys are going to learn, by the way. <laughs> PHP! PHP is a server-side scripting language that it's its own technology. It's its own language and it's its own technology. It's an introduction to server-side scripting. It's perfect. Because it's the simplest of all of them. I teach another course. CSIS 4310 distributed data processing there I teach JSP that stands for Java server pages not active server pages JSP Java server pages it's the server side uh, technology from Sun Microsystems but what it was Sun Microsystems now it's Oracle Okay, and it's using Java language, Java programming language. Very good. Finally, somebody is awake and makes a question. <laughs> What's the advantage of having code on the server versus the client side? <coughs> you guys are going to notice this when you start developing in PHP. Today, if I were to ask you to build your fully functional website in static web pages, you would have required more than eight weeks. Believe me, it will be the end of the semester and you guys wouldn't even be finished. Because you will have to create content for every single page. Okay? So, just to give you an idea, let's talk about the Colombian cuisine right if I were to ask you to 
build a website with a hundred dishes, each one with its own picture, its own description, its own name, its own its own what is a recipe, it would have taken you a whole lot, a whole lot to develop that. What we're going to be doing in PHP, which is the server side, is we're going to be developing code for one recipe, one dish. And we're going to grab out of the database any amount, 1, 10, 20, 100 of them. And with only one code, we can display any of them. So the advantage of having server-side scripting is that it dynamically creates the content out of a database and services that. Which, if you were to add, if you were to build a website with just client-side technology, you will have a lot of trouble, a lot of work, to be able to finish it. Now, what's another important factor of having server-side scripting versus client-side scripting? Suppose I tell you, okay. This week I need these 100 dishes. Then next week I tell you I need these other 100 dishes. And 80 of them are different. You will have to build 80 more pages for those 80 new dishes. In the server-side scripting, you have to do zero. What do you have to do? Just add it in the database. Add it in the database, and it will show up. So maintenance-wise, not only development, which we talk about in the first issue, but maintenance-wise, it's so much easier when you have server-side scripting. Now, if I download a page, if I go to your Colombian cuisine and I download a page, and I can see your recipes, right? Actually, actually, if it's from coming from a static website, I can actually copy your entire database, which is what I ask you to do with opensourcewebdesign.org, right? You guys went out there, and you look at the page that you liked. Oh, I like this one. And what do you do? You download the index HTML, and you download the CSS, and there you have it. You have the look and feel. You can apply it to your website. I can do the same thing with your website if you were to be static, which is a different story if it's driven from a database, because I have mechanisms to protect the content in that database when it's coming from a server-side scripting, and we're going to be we're going to be covering those things as well. So security-wise, it's much better when you have it as a script as a server-side scripting database. That's why most databases are done that way. So they come out of the server side. Most of the content comes or is being generated at the server side. So what are you going to send to the client side? Client side is still important. I'm not saying that it's not. The stuff that the local browser needs to execute to make your your website user friendly and eye catching that's the stuff that you will send to the client so javascript uh i don't know whatever library that you guys are using there's so many of them there's jquery there's scriptaculars there's prototype there's all these different um libraries that you can use on the client side, JavaScript libraries for the most part, that will make your website look nice and user friendly. That's the only concern on the client side. Okay? Which is different on the server side. On the server side you have to be able to, what are your main concerns on the server side? Security, maintainability, and fast development. Those should be the concerns on your server side. 
<clears throat> so the next four weeks we're going to be covering PHP and we're not going to be covering active server pages which is the Microsoft equivalent to the server-side scripting in fact active server pages is the old technology now it's called ASP.NET active server pages but using the .NET framework okay we're not going to be covering that's another way of building a website um, Java server faces 1 and 2 which is another server side um, technology from some microsystems using Java we're not going to be covering that that's some microsystems version of their server side scripting okay Java web services we're not going to be covering that either okay those are complex web, web uh, server technologies that I cover them in, in 4,000 level courses but not in here okay so we will be doing PHP the next four weeks